What's up guys, welcome to episode four of the Supercharger series. On this episode, I'm gonna talk about tuning devices and a little bit of tuning also. I'm gonna be putting in 330cc injectors. The car is running way too lean. If you saw the end of episode three, you'll see that I'm, my AFRs are running where I don't want them, which is 12s going into the 13s. See, they hit 13, that's not good. And that's not ideal. We want 11 to 11.5 on our air fuel ratio and open loop. These 330 injectors should help with that. I got them from 50 Motorsport. So I'm not gonna show you how to put those in because I covered that on a long ago episode and I also covered it in episode three. So that would be the time to switch out your injectors when you're putting the supercharger in itself. That's a great time to do it, but honestly, it's not that hard to do even with all of this installed right now. The Apexy Neo, which is my air fuel controller, I have an episode, two episodes, I think, back in the day on how to get that installed on the GS400 and how to street tune it. So be sure to go back and check out previous videos. I'm gonna go ahead and get these swapped out and then we will get into more of the tuning device discussion. And just like that, the injectors are replaced. It's gonna be probably impossible for you to tell even though they look kind of newer in there, same color. Here's the old ones right here. Now I'm gonna go in and mess with the Apex and Neo settings inside my car. You can see that my settings were insane beat one of the stock injectors. So what I'm gonna do is go through and zero out the high map, which would be open loop tuning. Down here is, this is the fuel trim uh, settings. And I'm probably gonna have to mess with that too, but I'm gonna have to get my fuel trim scanner hooked up to data log. But right now, all I'm gonna do is go through and zero this out. Highly recommend you get one of these for data logging purposes. So let's take a look and see what the fuel trims are doing. So right now we have a high negative, which is actually what I expected because larger injectors, negative number indicates lots of fuel and the car is trying to pull back that fuel, which is why you have a negative number. You're gonna mess with those low settings here and you should be able to see it on this chart. So what I need to do is take away more fuel and we should see that whole chart start to drop towards zero. So you can see how that whole entire graph just jumped, continuing to pull fuel and it's continuing to improve the trims. I'm gonna keep going, there we go. So you can see I probably took a little too much away. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit back, see if I can level it off. I'm shooting for zero. So this is my idle 1000 RPM low setting on the Neo. It's looking fantastic. What you can then do is put your foot on the gas and get it up to 1500 and watch it. And give it a second to catch up here and then let it stabilize. So it's running a little bit of a high positive there on the 1500. Minus 21. That's a lot better right there. All right, last one is 2,500 RPM. Looks really good. So here are my settings. And then 3,000 RPM is zero, so it's a hard stop. Right there. All right, we're doing some tuning. 2,000 RPM. Let's see what we're at. So from 2,000 to 3,000, I need minus 15. Okay. Let's see where we're at now. All right. Yes, that was good. So we know that across the board, we're gonna have to remove some fuel because it's running in the tens with, at zero. And when we do minus 15, we're at 11 to 11.8. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take minus 15 across the board. And then we're gonna look at our AFRs and see how we're doing. Once you know that that's a pretty safe bet to put everything at minus 15, you can do that. But you need to make sure that that's safe. You don't wanna go minus 15 and have it go really lean on you. Yeah. 
5,500 and on. Eight, minus 18 all the way to the top. So go minus 19 from 5,500 to the top. So let me get down to 2,000. I mean, it just My AFRs before were high 12s into the low 13s on times, and these injectors were taken away, what, 18% in places, 19% in some places. So we've got this thing dialed in all the way through the whole rev range. It just is loving this 11 to 11.5 AFR. So here's a hill, and I'm at 2,500 RPM. So watch the AFRs. Open loop tuning is complete. You will notice behind me that the supercharger is not installed yet. I'm doing this a little bit out of sequence. I'm going to talk today about fuel mods. You really should use the split second enricher, which has garnered tons of conversation online on my Instagram page, on Facebook, etc. because not a lot of people know about the split second enricher. It's a pretty trick device but the install can be daunting when you first look at it. That's why I'm gonna walk you through all the steps today. From the good folks at Split Second who have been around forever, trust them with your fuel and timing needs. Now this just controls fuel, and I'll explain what it does exactly here in a minute. You're gonna actually tee into a vacuum and boost line that is coming out of your supercharger. In my case, I'm gonna utilize the boost gauge vacuum line and I'm gonna tee into that. So that's what it looks like. And there are four screws on the back here. And when you open this up, you'll see some adjustments on the inside. It also comes with instructions, very detailed and easy to read instructions. By the way, when you take the screws off, this is what it looks like in there. So there's the unit. Get a couple stickers, plastic bag that it came in. And then you're gonna have this harness here. Now this describes what the enricher does, but I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you. The first sentence pretty much sums it up. The enricher is an automotive electronic module that can facilitate richer engine operation while the ECU is in closed loop. You're gonna to wanna to pull your negative battery cable. I've already mounted it up, as you can see. I do not have it plugged in, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna remove this ECU cover. There are three bolts that hold it down, 10 millimeter. So get those off and get this cover off first. This is for my automatic transmission emulator, which is in a previous episode if you need to see that for a manual transmission swap. There's really only a few wires here. I've already taped them that we're gonna be working with. And then this is the diagram number 10, which is a red wire, goes to your switched source in your footwell. So the connector, plugged in is how we'll look at this. Here's your red wire right here. And you can see I've already routed it in through the firewall into the fender wall over there. Well, you can't see that, but I did. So it's on a switch source at the fender wall in the fuse box. Just above that is a black wire, and that would be this one right here to ground, chassis ground right here. And what you wanna actually do is run a couple of these wires. So. We're also going to tie in number seven on the pinout to that same location. So you can see that I did that here. I tied them in to this larger black wire, which is then tied into a chassis ground location right here. We're going to skip some of these ECU connections. We'll get back to them. This is something else that you can do before you ever go to hook this thing up and plug it in is you're going to tie 11 and 12 together out of the richer connector. So you can see that I did that right here pins 11 and 12, shorten them, and solder them together. All right, those are the things you can take care of ahead of time. Now we're gonna start getting into the, some of the ECU pinouts and how to do that. Next, we're concentrating on five and six on the Lexus GS400. The bank two sensor to oxygen sensor. That is gonna be red E527 on the GS400. Number five on the plug is an input from that fourth sen sensor that I was talking about, they call it the force sensor. It's white on this. We're gonna find the white one here. The white one 
needs to go to the red on E527. So we need to cut the red on E527. So that'll be this red wire right there. This red wire that I'm pointing at right here is coming from the O2 sensor. We're gonna cut it. We're gonna grab it with this white wire. It's gonna go to the enricher and then it's gonna take that signal through the white and green wire and put it back into the ECU. Grabbing, manipulating, and putting it back in. Dealing with this red one. All I'm doing now is fishing the wires that I'm going to need from the enricher into the ECU area. I drilled a hole in the side of the box down here and I put a grommet in. So I'm just getting these wires kind of prepped and then a lot of these you're just not going to need. These wires here we are going to use. Bank 2 sensor 2 in to white on the enricher and then out of the enricher white on green to the same red wire into the ECU. We're going to take the green and white wire from the split second enricher into the severed red end into the ECU on the Lexus GS400. The output to the ECU is now connected. This circuit, if you will, is complete. Next, we are going to do number six on the pinout of the enricher. Sorry, it got scratched out, but it's white E518. The output of that from the enricher to the ECU will be the same wire, only we're gonna cut it. I've previously marked this wire on the GS400. It's this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, solder it in six and 15, which would be six pink and 15 pink and blue. output from enricher on pink and blue will go to the other end of the white which goes to the ECU. We're going to move on to the next segment which would be 8 and 9 and 17 and 18. We're going to start with 8 and if we look at 8 it's the input to the second sensor and it's going to be a tan wire. Look for B or black E311 and you can see that I've already marked these. We are going to solder the tan to that end of the black wire and then go for the ECU side here in a second. Tan is connected to black sensor input. Now tan and yellow sensor output and goes to ECU. Heat shrink is placed. Next up is this white wire. Split second and richer wiring. We are working with pin number nine, which would be on the GS400 white E312 white E312 is here. I previously had it separated. We're going to cut that, wire in the enricher just like we did before. Soldered and heat shrunk. Next up is the other side of the white wire that goes to the ECU, yellow and green, which would be 18 on the enricher. Go ahead and get that soldered up right there. Always check your solder by pulling gently back and forth and apart. Get your heat shrink lined up. Let's recap everything. Number 10 is red and that goes to your 12 volt switch. Number one and number seven, you're gonna tie together at a chassis ground. It's right here, I showed you that earlier. Pins 11 and 12 tied together. That's right here. It's all the soldering that I just did uh, where I intercept the signal from the O2 sensors, we intercept it, we process them through the split second enricher, and then they go into the ECU as manipulated signals. Cut the boost line there, and then add a T. There's the T, all connections zip tied, runs right down here to the homemade connector into the enricher. Let's take a look at these settings now. And that's where you make your adjustments. I'm gonna set mine up to kick in at four vacuum. To do that, you're gonna to have to get a digital multimeter, target 1.55 using the potentiometer, which is right here for V1. 
This dip switch should be up because we want to activate it based on pressure. I want mine to kick on as low as possible. So that's why I'm going to select V1 test port, which is right here. And then we're going to adjust this pot based on the output voltage that we see. And I'm going to touch this V1 terminal. I mean, it's almost there, 1.54. Might be able to make a small adjustment using this pot screw right here. Let's see if that did anything at all. Okay, I want to explain this split second enricher to you guys. Basically, I want you to watch the AFRs. I'm going to go partial throttle at about four vacuum here up this hill, right? There, watch my AFRs. See how it's kicking in and trying to fight right there. 13s. That's just partial throttle. So I need to turn the dial down to enrich the fuel and close the loop a little bit. Yeah, so it's still a little lean in that transition point to boost. Right there. So you can see it in the AFRs. That's why you have to have an AFR gauge. If you don't have an AFR gauge, it's gonna be a huge pain. You have to do all this stuff on the dyno and it's gonna cost you a fortune for the session. These are the pot adjustments. Right now I have it set on 70 because that's what I started out with. But to get richer, you actually need to go down. So 60, I'm gonna put it at 60 to help that transition a little bit. Right there. And then that's it. You just button it back up. And then you check your transition from closed loop and it transitions over into open loop where the Neo kicks in. That's what we're looking for is a smooth transition. It's hard to explain the enricher to people because it's not glaringly apparent. It kind of operates in the background quietly. Now, if you watch my AFRs, I'm in fifth gear right now and I'm kind of lugging the car and I'm gonna try to put it into zero to boost, but I'm only putting my foot down a little bit. I'm trying to get it so that you can see on the AFRs that it drops below the target of 14.7 when it's in closed loop operation. So you can see that that enricher is really trying to fight that 14.7. It's trying to grab that signal and it's trying to enrich in, in closed loop, not open loop. Previously, when I didn't have the enricher hooked up, it was like a almost like VTEC, but it was like a switch being flipped and it was almost too abrupt. That was a good example there because you saw my AFR from 13s and 12s in closed loop and then I put my foot all the way down to the floor for a second and it transitioned into open loop, 11 point something. That closed loop to open loop transition point is trying to make it seamless and factory. So that was a great example right there. You saw it go into the 12s. So second gear, I'm gonna go less than halfway. I hope that was a pretty good example for you of how this enricher really helps out. It's worth it, it's not that expensive, and it really helps your car to feel more factory. Thanks for joining me on episode four where we tuned the 1UZ. This is also applicable to the 3UZ and other Toyota V8s. Let's recap briefly what we went through today. First of all, you're going to need to tune that short-term fuel trim. And in order to do the short-term fuel trims on each bank, you're going to need an OBD dongle, such as the VPEAK Wi-Fi adapter. That's what I use. I then use the Car Scanner Pro app and I do a live data feed so I can see what's going on with my short-term fuel trims. I then make adjustments with my low settings on the Apex e Neo. Then we have the split second enricher and we're going to start by the split second enricher then adjusts some of your closed loop settings by adjusting the four dials and you want to start with 70 and then turn them down in order to enrich the fuel a little bit more. 
you need to use an AFR gauge in order to determine if that transition is richened enough or you need to back it off a little bit. Then we have open loop. You need to tune that using the high maps on the Apex Neo and your AFR gauge that hopefully you have installed. Otherwise, this is gonna be extremely difficult. Thanks for joining me on this episode. I look forward to sharing more with you on episode five where I'll get more into driving and performance. And there should be another episode after that where I'll give you either my cons list or my pros list of doing a supercharged application on your Toyota or Lexus V8. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop a like, drop a comment. I appreciate your support and I'll see you on episode five.